Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, this is a video that I probably should have made a long time ago, but for whatever reason, I just now thought about it. I'm cruising down the road. I ain't got nothing else to do, but I turned this camera around and I was looking at myself and I realizing that I am getting older and I am actually starting to look a little bit older. I got some nice little crow's feet going on right here, so undoubtedly the stress of this industry is taking its toll on me but what i wanted to talk to y'all about was making money in conjunction with property preservation um i see a lot of people talking about it all the time uh you know asking the question hey what do you guys do this that and the other and one of the unique things about it is, is in order to do everything that you have to do in property preservation is you acquire a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that you can use to do various things. Now, there's a lot of ways to make money out there, but a lot of those ways require special licenses, um, permits, and all this other stuff that just kind of complicates it so what i'm talking about is like the simplest things that you can do um to bring in a little bit of extra cash flow in conjunction now i understand that everybody's situation is different and uh, you know when i started this i lived in a subdivision so i literally had zero space uh, i was running this thing out of my garage and it was it was hard because I just did not have the space to grow. Once I moved out of my garage, I moved into a storage building. Um, so basically I rented an area in the parking lot where I could park my vehicles and then I had a unit and that's why I kept my stuff. And I'd done it that way until I could buy the farm, which is currently where we operate out of. So it's been a long process to get to the process that I'm at now, but having the space has opened up many different avenues of making a little bit of extra money. Um, but one of the things that I've done that just generates pure cash, people paying in cash, which is great, is firewood. Um, we cut down and we haul off a ton of trees. Not all trees are good for firewood, so, you know, you need to stick specifically to pecan, hickory, oak, um, you can throw some sweet gum in there, but obviously you can't sell like all sweet gum, um, firewood. So, but we just take down so many darn trees that we just end up with an abundance of wood. And I just thought, you know, that would be a quick and easy way I can, if there's ever any idle time, any rain days, anything along that line, on, along those lines, you know, we can have someone cutting and splitting firewood. And we sell a ton of firewood. Even in South Alabama, we sell a ton of firewood. Um, one of the other things that I do to generate just pure cash is scrap. You would be amazed when you're doing these debris removals of how much metal, if you'll take the time to separate it, how much metal comes out of a lot of this stuff. When I do these debris removals that are humongous, um, we'll bring it back and or while we're at the property, we'll separate everything that's metal. And then like our last load or our last two loads will be just the metal. We'll bring it back to the farm and we'll dump it to get it off of our dump trailers because we need the dump trailers. And then I have a trailer specifically set aside strictly for metal that we just fill up. So then we'll take it and we'll put it in that trailer. Uh, and I normally haul off two loads, and this is a 20 foot by seven foot by five foot trailer. Uh, and we normally haul off two loads a month of it slap full, which is somewhere between two and $300 per load. So an extra 600 bucks a month. And the firewood during the winter time is probably like a 1500 to $2,000 a month type deal. So we're not talking just large amounts of money, but it is cash. Um, and then, Work-wise, what we do is uh, we do demos, which I wouldn't advise, honestly, unless you're just planning on doing a whole bunch of them because the insurance to be able to do it is through the roof. Um, but we've demoed privately quite a few houses. Um, and, it, and it is fruitful, but like I said, the insurance is through the roof and it's a commitment, you know, 
um, you know, you're going to have to pay the insurance. If you want to be able to demo houses throughout the year, you got to pay the insurance throughout the year, and it's a lot. So that's depending on where you are in your business and how much, you know, work you think you can generate. In my opinion, demoing houses is not a complicated thing. I, I don't, you know, it's to me, it's far less liability than roofing or logging or a tree service, yet the insurance is higher than all of them except roofing. Um, so, demoing houses. But one thing that we do do, and, you know, I just kind of did a little test run on Angie's List. Now, I am not, by any stretch of the imagination, recommending Angie's List. Uh, maybe you guys can have a better experience than we did, but from my experience with Angie's List, you get in a whole bunch of people wanting you to do little bitty stuff. So, be like, you know, you'll pay $35 for a lead, and they're like, well, how much will you charge me to come remove a washer and dryer? And, um, you know, that's not really what we're into. But what I did run into on Angie's List is I picked up a couple of clients that buy and refurbished storage complexes so they buy renovate them and flip them well what comes with that is um they try to auction all of the storage units they can and the ones that don't auction you have to go in and remove so we got a couple of them and we do these and i they just pay me by the load um which has been fruitful for me convenient for them and they're all out of town so i actually just use proven i create a work order specifically to that in proven and we literally go through as if we were doing it the way that we typically do it which is just photographing everything photographing the loads each storage unit numbering them this that and the other um and that has been pretty fruitful and then we do little odd and in you know deck type stuff um which i don't really like to do because it's I mean, it, you, you can make a little bit of money doing it, but it's, you know, when you start, de the, it seems like everybody who wants a deck is 60 years and older. And when they're 60 years and older, nothing against the senior citizens, but normally they're retired, they're at home, and they're picky. So I specifically don't enjoy that, but we do do a little bit of that. Um, and, you know, another thing, too, man, is, is I have a good buddy of mine who's in this same industry, and he is at the threshold to where he needs to hire some people. And he's conservative, and uh, I can understand all of his logic and why he does not want to just jump to that next level and go. And um, I can appreciate that. He's content with being, you know, where he's at. But one of the things that has made me be able to do so a lot of the things that we do is I was able to hire people who know more about specific things than I do. You know, I'm what you would call the kind of guy who knows a little bit about a lot. So I'm a jack of all trades, a master of none. And, you know, in some sense, I envy a lot of these people who are just masters at one specific trade because I'm 34 years old now so I think I've missed the ship on that so my talents are my talents at this point in my life and I have to use them to the best of my ability but being the business owner and being the entrepreneur it's my job to find things that fit the bill for the guys who work for me uh, and I've been able to do that now I will mention that when we do get out of our wheelhouse and I try to take on different things that none of us are masters at, I lose money. Because it costs money to learn how to do something you do not know how to do. Or to, let me put that different, it costs money to learn how to do something great that you know how to do, but you don't know how to do it great. So my advice to anybody who's coming up and who's looking to grow their business is it's not just something that you are phenomenal at or it's not just something that your guys are phenomenal at be reluctant be hesitant because it costs money every single job when i have gotten out of my wheelhouse or my guy's wheelhouse um it's caused me a tremendous amount of stress and a tremendous amount of money because overall at the end of the day what's most important is delivering a satisfactory product to your customer and I will spend all of the money I have to maintain my reputation 
Uh, and I think most people who are in successful businesses are that way because reputation is ultimately the only thing that matters as far as continuing to get work. Um, so, I, you know, I hope... Another thing I'm getting into real quick before I get done with this, uh, you know, like I said, I bought that farm is we've got some goats, boar goats specifically, um, that I intend on, you know, raising and selling. Now, I've yet to figure out a way in my simple mind to process how in the world I'm going to make this a profitable thing. Um, and I'm not sure I can, but I am doing it for my kids and I'm just doing it to kind of have some fun because look, I've been working crazy hours for half a decade or better. Uh, and you know, I was talking about my looking older, you know, I feel older, I'm tired and I just don't want to run like a chicken with my head cut off forever. And I'm trying to cut back and do some things and enjoy some things. Um, and that's one of them. So, but if I do figure out how to make money with goats, I'll be sure to let everybody know. But one of the cool things about goats is they eat up all of the stuff that we bring back and cuts down drastically on what I have to burn. So, you know, that is pretty cool and they seem to love it. You know, they eat just about anything. And they'll walk past Bella Hay to go to this trailer load of, you know, vines and hedge clippings and tree limbs and everything that we bring in and um i you know that's pretty neat but listen i hope that this video helped you guys i mean i i, I really do i want everybody to be successful um and i look i'm not some brilliant mastermind so if you guys have come up with things that that generate you money on the side uh i would certainly be interested in hearing them um, but those are just some of the things that we do on the side to make sure that we're busy um, and that I can keep all of my guys employed day in and day out. So I hope it helped. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and spring is coming. See ya.